You know, there's nothing like being behind the scenes. I love being in the green room, man. Although I've got blue, you've got blue, Joseph. There, there is no green room, right? And I'm not going to spend time reading this long bio or I'd be here all day. So, Joseph, my friend, take a moment, if you will, and tell the folks, who is Joseph McLennan III? And what are you up to these days, my man? Hey, Shay. Well, first off, you know, thank, first off, thank you, everybody that's here listening and watching this and parting with your precious time and your energy. I appreciate it more than you know, as you'll, as you'll see as we get going. And, uh, and Shay, thank you for this opportunity and trusting me with your peeps, if you will. Uh, I know it's no easy feat putting this whole thing on together, especially in this day and age. And uh, and thank you for not reading that whole bio and everything because it's it's uh, it, it gets long and and I get people that you know read it and read it and read it and then I'm feeling like hey you know we didn't need all that. So uh, by profession, I'm a neuropsychologist. Uh, I have a doctorate in neuropsychology. I uh, help people get over fears and phobias and emotional challenges that hinder their lives. You know I always say to people if you come into my office and you got a fear of dogs, take a guess what's gonna be in there. It's gonna be a dog, and my methodology being that it's unorthodox, it's very effective. One or two visits, I'm gonna have you over your challenge. Uh, by profession, I'm what's called a, an ultimate performance specialist. Kind of a high-end life coach, if you will, and I've had the privilege of working with uh, a lot of A-list movie stars, Academy Award winners and Grammy winners, and millionaires and billionaires and sports figures and you name it. But everybody always wants the same thing. They want to go further, faster, and they want more. It's part of our nature. And uh, so to answer your question really quickly, what I'm up to is um, bringing this information, and, and Shay, you and I have had a lot of conversations about this, bringing uh, the information that I've had the privilege of, of uh, administering and, and teaching many, many people over the past uh, three decades, really, I've been in the belly of the beast. Um, I'm a hired gun for like my business partners like Tony Robbins and, and uh, you name it. And uh, I get to watch and I help people change their lives. They take that information back to their communities. They thrive. But here's the, here's the deal. And this is not to the exclusion of anybody. Only three to five percent of those audiences are black. And so what I'm up to lately is bringing that information at this this juncture in time for as many people as I possibly can. <laughs> yeah, you know, you you picked this title, and and we're gonna get into it. We're in the we're in the green room, all right, man. So this is when we get to kick back, we get the we get to relax. And you've got this whole thing, multi millionaire, become a mega preneur, some of that nature. Here's the question, man. Why do you think that topic's more relevant now than ever before? Well. Uh, two reasons. First off, let, let's get on the same page of what an entrepreneur is. Mm -hmm. An entrepreneur, by definition, is anybody that chooses to and actively proceeds in engaging in creating income through means other than the traditional employer-employee relationship. And that can be part-time stuff, you know, what do they call it, side gigs and things like that. Anybody that chooses to do that, but actively engages in doing so, does, doesn't just think it. But here's the challenge. Now, I, I got these numbers. These came from, and you can look it up. These came from the Center for Small Business uh, Recording Administration here in the United States. Last year, in, uh, in 2019, 775,725 775, people registered for business, meaning entrepreneurs. And those are just the people that registered. There's probably twice that many that started without registering. Out of those, only... 13% reported having had a profit. And that number is uh, 100,714 people. Now, out of that, only three to 5% actually become successful at that, okay? And that number is 5,035 uh, 5, uh, people. And so out of 770, and that's just the recorded people, most people fall by the wayside. A megapreneur is in that upper three to five percent of people but they're also shay they're wealthy and wealthy means healthy happy and financially abundant mm. so um, a multi-millionaire megapreneur obviously the money and the business side of it is huge and that's part of you know what we guide people to do and what we want to do but the other side of it as well is a megapreneur in my opinion is somebody who's effective at whatever they go after 
whatever they go after. And I don't teach theory. I mean, I don't do things that I, I don't teach anything that I haven't done myself or I haven't taught other people to do as well. So everybody wants to be wealthy and everybody wants to be a megapreneur. If we make that dis distinction alone and then we get the skills to be able to do it, then we move to that higher level. For those folks that are out there right now, you can go and hit the share button. One of the things I've asked Joseph McClendon III, and I think he's okay with this, is you can pay this message forward to your network. You can pay this message forward to your community. How do you do that? Hit the share button. Hit the watch party button. And if you're ready to be a megapreneur, if you're ready to be a multimillionaire, just look right below the video, look right below the video, and put, I am a megapreneur. Hashtag Joseph McClendon III. Just put, I am a a megapreneur. Now, now, Joseph, they're writing, I am a megapreneur right now. And there's so many folks that are out there watching. Beverly's out there watching. Mavis is out there watching. Carol's out there watching. Janice, I see you out there. Carl, my man, is in the house. We're in the green room, right? I can't stay here all day. But I I've got to ask you a question. And, and this is very serious. And I know you're a serious person. But, okay, this is, they call it one of the worst global uh, pandemics ever. I get that. Take us behind the scenes, by the way, if you would. What's the conversation you're having with your peers where for some folks, their whole speaking business model has been taken off, right? It it's no longer exists. For others, they've had to transform how they're working from home. For others, they've had to change their mindset and their beliefs. They're six months into this, by the way. March 20th, yeah. they said they were going to do some things. We're where we are. Some folks haven't written a book, Joseph. Some folks have not started the business. Some folks are in the same place they were six months ago from a health perspective. Here's my question to you. Number one, what conversation are you having with your peers behind the scenes that you're encouraging and inspiring each other? So what type of conversation are you having? And then number two, what do you say to the person who's like, oh man, I haven't done anything, Joseph. Um, sheesh, I was supposed to get started. Ah. Ah. What would you say to that person that's beating himself up right now? I'm going to work back to front. I'm going to answer your second question first, and that is this. There's a saying, and the saying is, the best, play, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The next best time is right now. And so what I say to people, and I'm not so much of a, uh, I am empowering, if you will, but I'm not so much of a motivator or inspirational speaker as much as I am tools, techniques, and strategies to do something. So to people who are where we are right now, understand this. There's, there's three things. I call it the 60-20-20 rule. And this is across the board with everything that you do, even in especially business and entrepreneur or megapreneurship. Please write this down. I didn't say this in, uh, in the very beginning. Please write this down. It's 60% psychology. We've all heard of the 80-20 rule, which means if you think you can, that's 80% of doing something and then 20% mechanics. Well, there's a difference. If you want to operate at that high level, which I know everybody does, and everybody wants what they want sooner rather than later, especially now. And so psychology is, in the 60-20-20 rule, psychology is the number one thing. Psychology is different than mindset. Mindset is a set of thoughts about a specific thing. And you have to keep mustering. You've got to keep reminding yourself of that and fortifying that. A psychology is your operating system that runs inside of you. It's the words and the, and the pictures and the thoughts that we think about ourselves, about other people, and about the world around us. And so when we get that stuff in play and we get control of that stuff and we direct it, then the other two things, 20% our energy that we bring to any situation, and I'm not just talking about get up and go energy. I mean that, that electricity that, that it, it impacts people all around it. It impacts the world around us. And then the third thing is our magnetism. And that means how we attract people and things into our lives. And so to that person, to everybody, I'm going to say this. You're human. I am too. Procrastination, hesitation, fear of failure, fear of success, imposter syndrome, those are the thieves of our dreams. And if you're procrastinating about something, if you have started something and you haven't finished if, you, if you're looking at something and you want to do and you've got any anxiety about it, that's your brain. And so the piece that's left out in most, you know, because, you, you know, you and I have talked about this before, Jay, is that people get these courses and they get all these things and the best of intentions to do something, but we don't do it. Well, it's because your psychology is, is, is blocking you. If you learn the process, and I'm not about motivation, like I said, there's a process. You know, like I said, you come into my office, you got a fear of heights. We're going to go to the top of a building. you got a fear of, of closed places. We're going to go in an elevator so we can deal with it right now and change that psychology. Lastly, I'll say this, is that when you, deal, you do that, then you handle it right now. It has a processional effect over everything that you do. 
when you finally get off that dime and you do something about writing that book, you do something about starting that business or continuing that business or continuing doing something that you said you were going to do and didn't do, whether it's your diet so that you can get a great body or whether it is, you know, your relationships or whether it is starting your business and whatever it is in your life. If there's, if you're not doing and getting what you want right now, it's because this is in play. Change your mind, change your life. Change your mind, change your life. Look, man, we got a show. We've been in the green room probably the longest we've been in the green room, man. Um, but I, I'm wondering for the persons out there that's an entrepreneur, that's a speaker, an author, a coach, a trainer, a network marketer, and they might be thinking, Shay, why should I tune in? Shay, why should I pay attention to the message that Joseph's going to have? Uh, we got to get out the green room, man. I was going to do it for you, but take a moment and, and talk about who this message is for and what they can expect when we come back. Cause we got to get going. We're in the green room. I love these private conversations and we probably got several thousand folks that are eavesdropping right now on this conversation, which is cool, which is cool, but take yeah, a yeah. moment and say, you know, what this is the number one reason you need to pay attention because this is the message i'm about to deliver to everyone that's out there watching and this is how it would help you yeah here's what i'll say i'll answer your question by asking everybody a question mm. two questions number one do you want what you want sooner rather than later the answer is a resounding yes for everybody why would you rate especially right now in these times because there's only going to be two kinds of people when this is over and this too shall pass just so you know and I wrote them down here. Check this out. We've been here before. L life is cyclical. And I know, Shay, we got to get out of this. But let me share with you. If, you know, if you're on this call, you're old enough to remember Ebola, SARS, uh, the swine flu, uh, Zika, and the list goes on and on. And listen, this too shall pass. But when it does, whether it's a vaccine or whatever happens, when it does, there's only two kinds of people. There's the one kind of person that's going to look back and go, I am so glad that I learned something that, that enabled me to change myself and change my own trajectory, change my beliefs, change my behaviors. I learned something and I, imply, I applied it and that's why I'm thriving now. Or there's gonna be the other kind of person that's gonna go, I wish I would have paid attention back then. And all of us have had situations where we go, I wish I would have invested in Apple or Tesla when it was a dollar a share. Now is that time. And so when I come back, I'm going to share with you some things. I'm going to reiterate some things, but I'm going to share with you something. And I'm going to give you an actual tool that you can use to start that shift. And then, of course, we're going to invite you to do something as well after, after that. So, you know, I get excited about this because lastly, I'll say this. I have had the privilege, at the risk of sounding arrogant, of presenting to close to 5 million people now through seminars and workshops and, and, and a, a live uh, engagements with people. And so uh, again, I've watched this, the, give the, uh, this, these tools, people take it, use it, make the changes then and there and change their lives. And now I wanna give that to you as well for the obvious reasons that we shared before, Jay. You know, that makes a lot of sense. For those folks that are out there, do me a favor, do me a favor. We're about to kick off the show. We gotta get out this green room. Hit the share button, hit the watch party button. Look right below, pay this message forward to someone else. We believe in the giver's economy. The person out gives the competition okay out earns the competition the person out gives the competition out earns the competition so hit the share button hit the watch party when you do that don't say anything about joseph just write in that comment side just put it's your time it is your time now is your time just put now is your time just do me a favor just just hit the watch party button hit hit hit, hit the like button and just put and when you hit the button to share it put now is your time and then put hashtag joseph mcclendon because now is your time with that being said joseph we got to get going for for sheila henry that's out there grace in the house dr ethel james it is always a pleasure kelvin my man calvin good to see you we got to get going in five this is my favorite part joseph four i love doing this y'all know this three Two, one, we got a show. We'll be right back. I made to my mom. I only did this message for one person, and that's my mom. This is for you, mom. Love you. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Shay Brown. My check, my check. All I do is we win, we win, no matter what. Got money on my mind, I can never get enough. And every time I step up in the building, everybody hands go up. Yes. 
Yeah. And they stay there. And they stay there. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur, and welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue-focused late-night show in the country where we're on a mission, and our mission is to empower, our mission is to inspire, and our mission is really to provide you, that's why right, you, the entrepreneur, with all of the resources that are necessary to execute that big, big, big vision you have for the people you were called to serve. You know, I always like to share three visions. I always like to remind you got three visions, I believe. First, you have a vision for yourself. You know, the clothes that you want to wear, <laughs> the car that you want to drive, the organic food that you can't wait to eat, right? And it takes resources, which means it takes revenue. And then the second, the second vision you have is you have a vision for the people you, not me, the people that you love the most, your loved ones. And I think about Mother Dear, by the way. She recently celebrated her 73rd birthday, maybe watching right now. And there was a time when this whole global pandemic took place that I couldn't go to her house. And so she's learned, she's only 15 minutes away, how to use online shopping. And some of you out there give your credit card to a loved one as well. And you get pleasure out of that. She's very good at this, by the way. Uh, some of you write a check for someone's health care insurance. It takes resources. Some of you want to send your kids to a school, not of their choice, but of your choice. It takes resources. That means it takes, I know, I know, I'm back to it again, revenue. And then I believe you have a third vision. Pay it closer to this one. Listen very closely to this one here. You have a vision for the people you were called to serve. And imagine, I always like to share the story of Noah. Imagine you're Noah, by the way, and you show up, you're ready because and you don't have to be a believer, but follow the story. God's giving you all the talent. He's giving you all the experience. He's giving you everything you need. Noah's ready to get going. Before Noah gets going, there's a knock at the door. Noah's like, what's, what's up, what's up? Over here, Noah, over here. Yeah, what's going on? Uh, Noah, I'm sorry to report, but there are, there are no hammers in the house. No hammers in the house, no big deal. We keep going, it's okay. What's going on now? No, down here, down here. Yeah, what's up? Uh, <clears throat> there are no nails either, Noah. Just want to let you know that. Okay. <sighs> Rule number one, don't panic. No nails, no hammers. We're going to be okay. We're ready to get going. What is it now? Over here, Noah, I got to report to you, buddy. Um, there's no wood and there's no people to put the boat together. Good luck. <sighs> and maybe that's you right now. You need the resources to execute that vision. That's what Joseph McClendon III is here today. So let me go ahead and welcome him to the Happy Entrepreneur Show. What's up, Joseph? How are you? Oh, I'm good, my friend. How are you doing, my friend? Man, I'm doing really, really good. Look, let me just address the elephant in the room. I mean, I, I would go to preliminaries and all that stuff, but I'm curious. This whole multi-millionaire, megapreneur title, People have been hearing um, seven figures in seven minutes. Um, go buy this. Go buy that. You can be a millionaire tomorrow. And some people's bank account right now, Joseph, doesn't reflect how good they are. OK, so take a moment, if you would. And why did you pick that title? And why now, man? Why now? Well, as I said before, first off and, and first off, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody that's here uh, that you're giving me the gift of uh, your time, your attention and your energy right now, because you got other stuff you could be doing. And um, I appreciate that because somebody did that for me at some point was, was shared their heart with me. And that's what I, uh, I want to do with you as well. And the other thing is, uh, Shay, thank you. You know, thank you for uh, allowing me this, this opportunity to do this and this platform that you're creating for so many people because you are, and please put yourself up, up back up because I want to see your response uh, when I say what I'm about to say. You, my friend, are, to say the least, a badass in the community. And what I mean by that is, you know, when I was first introduced to you, to you, what I did was I did my research and I looked around. I, you know, I Googled the things and, and that was great and everything. But more specifically, I started to talk to other people who knew you and had been through some of your programs and done what you've done and experienced what you've done. Uh, and you're making a huge difference in people's lives. And I honor you for that and I thank you for that. Thank you. And um, uh, to answer your question, I am on a mission as well, and we are on a mission together, and that is to, to make more megapreneurs, make more multi-millionaire megapreneurs. And let me share with you what a megapreneur is so we're all on the same page. And by the way, if you're listening to me right now, please take some notes uh, for a couple reasons. My background is I'm a psychologist, and I, my superpower, for lack of a better term, is helping people 
change this up here because this is the epicenter. This is the control center of everything that we do. And so I want you to write this word at the top of your page, megapreneur, M-E-G-A, I think you got the spelling there, P-R-E-N-E-U-R, okay? And a megapreneur is, let's just say, the successful of the entrepreneurs. And what I mean by that, I read some numbers on before, 700, over 700,000, almost 800,000 people registered to have a business last year, registered in the United States. Only 5% of them, I'm sorry, 13% of them actually showed income. Uh, that was 100,000, 714,000 people showed income. And out of those, only 50, only 5,000 of them actually became, were able to leave their regular jobs and to, and that business that they started become their, what you're calling resource, their, their, their finances for doing that. Most people dabble. Most people, only three to five percent of the people that go after making more money or doing something, only three to five percent of them are successful. I'll give you some examples here in a minute, but a megapreneur is somebody that's in that three to five percent. A megapreneur is somebody who, whatever they go after, and like you said, Shay, people have started courses. You know, I, I see it all over the place and it hurts my heart. Because the amount of people, 87% of the people who get a course, buy a course, or start out to do something, they don't, they don't even get started, let alone finish it. And so a megapreneur is somebody that's successful at that upper uh, five, three to five percent, as well as they're successful at whatever they go after and they want to be. And everybody, please write this down because I might not know you, but I know what you want. Write it down. Wealthy. Wealthy. You want to be wealthy. Now, don't get it twisted. Let me share with you what wealthy is so we're on the same page. Wealthy means to be healthy, happy, and financially abundant. And everything that comes underneath that, healthy means your fitness, your, your energy, and all that stuff. Happy means, you know, your relationships, the, you know, everything that you do in your life so that you go through life optimistic instead of pessimistic. And financially abundant means that you have income coming into you through other means other than the traditional uh, um, employer-employee relationship, and that money continues to come in and geometrically grows. Here's what I want for you, and this is the multi-millionaire mindset. Shay, you said something about you know uh, seven-figure attitudes. I call it a seven-figure psychology. Ooh, and that seven-figure seven figure psychology. psychology. I yeah, like that. Because yeah, because it is, uh, you know, we'll get into that, but it's all about our psychology. Here's what I want for you. As a matter of fact, everybody imagine this. Going to your bank account, and I want everybody to experience this. If you haven't experienced it yet, I'm telling you, it's one of the greatest feelings in the world. When you go to your bank account and you look at your bank account and there is in excess of a million dollars in your bank account, never mind your assets and things that are around you, but there's in excess of a million dollars in there. I'm going to tell you that is the feeling most people have never experienced. But when you do that, here's what happens. When you experience that, you're going to realize that you've even made more money than that. You've done more than that million dollars that's there because you've done stuff with it as well. That's a psychology. That's a psychological change. And so when that changes, the reason I say that a multi a multimillionaire megapreneur is not just somebody who makes a lot of money. But they live with that and they have that experience and they're in that upper three percent at whatever you do, whether it's real estate, whether it's network marketing, whether it's Internet marketing, whether it's losing weight, whether it is, you know, whatever it is in your life. There's a philosophy. There's a process behind it. You got me started, Shane. You know, you talk about a, a process behind it. And, and this sounds like sounds different, but folks may be thinking to themselves. And I don't you know, I haven't asked a question to them yet. All right. Have I heard that? So in Joseph's opinion, what's holding people back? Like, okay, okay, Joseph, I, I mean, I obviously want to provide for my family. I, I want to be successful. I, I want to be healthy. I want to be wealthy. I want to be, as you said, I want to be financially wise and so forth. But what do you believe is one or two or three of the reasons that people are, are held back from even taking those steps? I can give you three in specific. And again, everybody, please write this down because as you write, you invite, okay? What you don't, you won't. So write it down so you have it at the very least because I'm going to give you something here to help aid in those three things there. But here's what I'll say. Everybody wants. We all want. You know, you get up in the morning, you want something. And to go back on what you just said earlier because this is brilliant, the vision that we have for ourselves, that's a want. But most people's vision is a dream. And it's not for lack of knowledge, 
if you bought a course, if you do a course, we all know what to do. You know, if, and I hope this doesn't offend anybody. If you're overweight, if you're unhealthy, it's not because you don't have the knowledge to lose weight. It's not because you don't know how to. Everybody knows how. We just don't do what we do. The number one reason, the number one reason why people do not do what they say or do what they and, and what holds them back is fear. We're afraid. But it's these five things specifically. Number one, fear of failure. Number two, fear of success. Number three, procrastination, which is the fear of uncomfortableness. Number four, hesitation. And the last one is something called imposter syndrome. And I'm going to say this amongst our community. It's been, it has been indoctrinated into our belief system and, and our, let's just say, our history for 400 years. And so that is, the, that is the first thing is our psychology. Write that down. That's the first thing is our psychology. It's 60%. I call it the 60-20-20 rule. It's 60% of everything that you do. If you procrastinate, if you've not done what you, what you, want, you said you're going to do, ever, it's because you're afraid. It's because something's going on inside. And if you're pounding your chest and saying, no, that's not me. I'm not afraid of anything. Then you're the one that's the, more afraid than anybody else because you're, because you're denying reality. You're denying the human nature. Human nature. We're born with the fear of rejection. We're born with it. And, and by the way, I might not have shared or maybe people weren't, weren't, maybe people weren't on the green room, Shay, but um, I don't teach theory, meaning I don't teach something that I haven't done myself. Secondly, I don't teach something that I haven't done for other people as well. I'm a neuropsychologist by profession. I help people get over, in, in a very short amount of time, fears, phobias, emotional challenges that hinder their lives. Most of the time in one visit, because I have a secret weapon, if you will, or, or a, my, my friend calls it a superpower, and that is to be able to go in here and surgically help you remove what's stopping you, that fear, and replace it with something that's empowering. So the first answer is, and I'll go through these quickly, I promise. Uh, the first answer is your psychology. Change your psychology, you change your world. There is a definite different psychology of a multimillionaire than there is of somebody else, and that's not a mindset. The second thing is your energy, what you bring to the table, the electricity that you bring to the table. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that millionaires, multimillionaires, people that are successful in that three to 5% of people, have a different energy about them, have a different electricity about them. Not just a get up and go kind of thing, but a different stuff about them. Shay, you've got it. And, and by the way, everybody on this call has it as well. My outcome is to help people just enhance it. I call it being magnificent. Mm. Magnificent is to magnify the essence of who you are, which brings us to the last thing, magnetism. I don't have my props with me here. I forgot to bring them up, Shay, but it's to magnetize yourself and what you want. And I'm not just talking about the laws of attraction and, and as you think and all that stuff. I'm talking about the physical ability to, to impact other people and other things. Everybody, you know, let me ask everybody a question. And, and Shay, can they respond back like with typing a one or anything? Will you yes, see that? Yes, what they can do is anyone that's watching right below the video or on different platforms, they can respond right below the video. Yes, they can. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Type a one if this has ever happened to you. You're sitting in your car, your windows are rolled up, you're listening to your jams, and all of a sudden you feel somebody looking at you. And you look over, and sure enough, there's somebody looking at you. Type a one if that happens to you, if that's happened to you. Shay, let me know if, that, if, if they're responding back. I will do remember, that, yes. Okay, okay, fabulous. To everybody, it happens. Or vice versa. You're sitting in your car and, and you see somebody else. You look over in another car, you know, 20, 30 feet away, and maybe that's an attractive person or an interesting person, and you look at that person and they feel you and they look over and they catch you looking at them. Type of one if that happens to you. Type of one right below the video. Look, look right below type the video. video. Just type the, the number one. Up. Now, I'm talking science. By the way, while you're doing that, I want you to know, I said I don't teach theory. I taught at the University of Southern California for seven years as a professor there. And, and I had to prove this stuff that I'm about to tell you. And, what and, and, they, and Joseph, you, just, just so you know, the typing number one, uh, Haki says he has your book. He typed number one. East Sullivan typed number one. Karen Moore types number one right now. Paula DeBoss is out there, types number one. Demetrius says number one. Tabitha says number one. Latasha says number one. C. Marie, what's up, C. Marie Henderson, Karen Moore? So many folks are typing number one. I can't get to all the names right now, but they're typing number one. It has happened to them, Joseph. Yeah. 
to all of us. So I'm, I'm talking science here. I'm not talking, you know, unicorns and, and rainbows and crystals. I'm talking science, okay? Because yeah. that's what I'm all about. I can tell you what to do, but if I show you and I give you examples, I call it tell, show, try, do that. It's my teaching methodology. It's my methodology in helping people get something. I'm going to tell you about it. Then I'm going to give you an example like I'm giving you now. And then I'm going to give you something to try. And then you're going to do it and you get results. Because if you come in in that fear of dogs, you're going to hold the dog at the end of that hour. But then when you leave there, I'm going to give you something that you can do. So it fortifies everything in your life. Okay. I get excited about this. So here's how that works. When you put your attention and intention on anything, but in this case, another person, Four things happen to you, science, and don't take my word for it. Go online, go on YouTube, and look up Karelian photography. You'll see it. When you put your attention and intention on somebody, we're using somebody else for an example, but it works for everything. Four things happen. Number one, your electromagnetic energy grows. Your electromagnetic energy go, grows. You know, when we talk at, at the uh, uh, the Comeback uh, Champions uh, Summit. Summit. Mm -hmm. Shay, I'm going to give you, I'm going to, I'm going to break this down to such a basic form that everybody's going to get it and do it. And Joseph, before you, before you get the breaks it form, for those folks that are watching, they got a question here. They asking they host a watch party. The answer is yes. Um, Joseph didn't make me give him a cash app payment before we got started. He just had to sell him some money. He said, Shay, I'm here just to serve and add value today, which we're so humble. So here's how you can pay it forward. You can go ahead and hit the watch party button. You can hit the share button, share it to your community, share it to your network. And when you share it, go ahead and put serve plus add value. Now is the time. Put now is the time. Hashtag Joseph McClendon. All right, back over you, Joseph. But yes, you can share this out. It's okay to yeah, do that. Yeah. Please do, because that's why I'm doing this. And I'll, I'll get into that a little bit later. It's the reason Shay and I are doing this together is because this is our, our, our this is our time as it is your time to give back. That's how we grow. Okay. And so I'll get back to what I was talking about because I get excited about this. So, so when, when that happens, number one, your electromagnetic energy grows, go on YouTube and you look up Karelian photography, you'll see it. When that energy grows, the other thing that happens is they feel it. That is why when you look at somebody, they feel it. It's unconscious, but they feel it. It's something inside. It's that seventh sense, if you will. The third thing that happens is their electromagnetic energy grows. And the fourth thing that happens is that you become attracted to each other. You become magnetized. You've actually magnetized yourself, meaning your electromagnetic energy grew. You caused their electromagnetic energy to grow. And now you move towards each other. Now, guess what? What if that was the same for your business, for your health, for anything at all in life? I'm here to tell you that it is. And when you learn that secret weapon, if you will, that's what moves you into that megapreneur psychology. Now, lastly, I'll say this. Shay, you said something that's brilliant, and that is in terms of our vision about ourselves, other people, and I'm going to add to it mm -hmm. the world around us. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm going to add that too. <laughs> Yeah, because because that those are our core beliefs. Our beliefs are our psychology. Our psychology is the underlying thoughts, the operating system that goes on. It makes us do or not do. That makes us afraid or courageous. That makes us loving or hating. Anything that that, that psychology that goes on. Well, you don't know how that psychology got implanted in you. Some of us, you know, and I'll just go ahead and say, it, if you got black skin. It was implanted in you and it was it was administered in a very sinister way for a long time and handed down through the ages. You know, I will, you know, unapologetically say that this, if you got black skin, then you have a psychological wound and that beckons to be healed. And when you change it, that's when life changes. That is when you, because we are strong, we are, you know, and I'm not just, and by the way, this is not to the exclusion of anybody else. Everybody's this way. But now is our time. It truly is. The world is ready to change. Are you? Okay. So, so the, you've got to have that vision about yourself, about other people, about the world around you. But a vision is different than a dream. And get this really, really important. A dream is what most of us have. A dream is something we want. Earlier you said, Shay, you said people want stuff. Everybody wants stuff. That's a dream. But a dream goes away. Most of you don't even remember what you dreamt about last night. That's how quickly a dream goes away. A vision, on the other hand is a dream that is repeated over and over and over and over again with intensity, with emotional intensity to the point that it becomes a belief inside of you. 
What is your vision about yourself? Most of us don't know. And if we do have it, it's wrought with a lot of, like I said, imposter syndrome, you know, all of those things that are going on, self-worth issues and things like that. What is your vision about yourself? What is your vision about other people? What do you believe about other people? Do you believe they're good people? Do you believe they're here to help you? Do you believe that, that you can help them? What do you believe about other people? And then lastly, what do you believe about the world around you? Do you believe that the world is a cruel place? Do you believe that we're stuck where we are in this pandemic? What are your beliefs? Most people don't know. But when you do that, and that's what we're going to do on the, on the uh, comeback challenge or, or comeback champion challenge or summit, then what we're going to do is we're going to explore those things so you can have those things. But when you start to change those things, then you change everything about you. And when you change everything about you, guess what? Just like I just told you, you change the world around you. Mm. Now, now, Joseph, they may be wondering, uh, folks out there like Eric Swanson who connect us together. Thanks a lot, Eric Swanson, a fantastic yeah. human being, by the way. Uh, Dr. <laughs> Ethel Demetrius, so many Nadia's out there, so many folks that are watching. Um, not everybody's read your book, by the way. And can we, you just took off. That's just how you roll, bro. You just like, That's bam, cool. bam, bam. Can we, can we slow down for a moment and then we'll speed back up? So let's, we'll yeah, slow yeah. down for just a second. There's some folks that might be wondering, Shay, I'm meeting the guy for the first time, okay? Can he take a minute or two or three to tell us, all this sounds good, I believe it works, but can he give us a little bit of his backstory? I mean, I'll go read the bio and that's good stuff, but can he give us one or, or two little times in his life when he's had to utilize some of these skills and apply them for himself? And they didn't ask me that question, Joseph, but I think it's a reasonable request at a reasonable time. A reasonable yeah. request at a reasonable time. So take a moment, if you would, and share maybe an, a time where you had to apply some of this in your own life and a little bit of your backstory, just so they have an idea. Yeah, um, and, and and thank you for that because uh, I think it's important that um, people know that who they're talking to has sure. been there, done that, and had that experience. So we're not teaching theory. Um, I do what I do because somebody did something for me at the worst time of my life. And what I learned is what I'm paying forward. And Shay, what you just said with regard to giving is living and with regard to our outcome is to give to other people. That's yeah. how our life is shaped. Um, when I was 17 years old, um, three grown men tried to take my life because of the color of my skin. The things that they said to me, the things they did to me, they broke my body. I still have a, a, a rib because you can't cast a rib when they broke my ribs and they left me for dead. They, they, they said they were going to kill me. And um it destroyed me. You know, long story short, it destroyed my self-esteem. It destroyed my, my pride. It destroyed everything about me. And I became homeless. Not homeless living in my car. I became homeless living in a cardboard box behind an old drive-in theater. <clears throat> and um, what changed my life was somebody that I didn't know cared for me and, and introduced me to, let's just call it personal development. They gave me the book, Think and Grow Rich. Now, pay attention to what I'm about to say. I was desperate, by the way. I didn't, you know, I was at the bottom of my life. I read the book and I did what the book said. I did the exercises in the book and I didn't know what I was doing, but I just did them. And as a result, I know now that was the beginning of changing my psychology, my beliefs about myself, about other people, about the world around me. Because before I felt like I was worthless and that people thought I was worthless and that people were bad and that people were after me and that the world was a cruel place. And so I did the processes and I changed my life. And when I went back to that man to thank him, and I said, you've changed my life. What do I do for you? How do I thank you? What he said to me, he said, Joseph, you repay me by doing the same thing that I've done for you for as many people as you possibly can for the rest of your life. And so uh, that's why I'm here. And that's why I do what I do. Because uh, I made that not just that promise to him. It's that I made that promise to myself as well. And that's just one side of it. And so I, that's when I started studying psychology because I, I wanted to understand how I did what I said. And if anybody tells you that they start psychology because they just want to help people, they're lying to you. They got to help themselves first. And so it's physician heal thyself. And I, I changed my own life. Uh, and I became, let's just say, financially abundant and successful at a very young age. Uh, I became a megapreneur very young because I applied those three things that I just taught you. I applied changing my own psychology. I applied changing my own energy. And I applied changing my own magnetism. And now I have it down to a science, obviously, taking the, the uh, um, neurosciences and mixing them in with practical wisdom of things that you can do to help people. And so now, uh, again, and, and again, maybe you weren't on the green room, um, 
I'm a hired gun to a certain extent. Yes, I do my own workshops and seminars and things like that, but for the past almost three decades, I've had the privilege of presenting a very specific set of skills uh, to well close to five million people now, around the world, internationally. Before COVID, I was in front of easily 15 to 20,000 people every single month, internationally. And um, I teach these people, and I don't just teach, we get an experience, they get a change, and then they take that information back to their communities and they thrive. Well, only, and Shay, you've been, uh, maybe three to 5% of that audience are black people, Mm -hmm. which means we're not getting what we desperately need, especially in these times right now. This is our opportunity. Shay, you said it so, so well. Now is your time. Now is your time. If you're not doing what you know you could, should, would be doing, now is your time. If you procrastinate, if you hesitate, if you've got something that you really want to do, but you're not getting up early, staying up late and doing all that extra stuff now, then guess what? Later on, you're not going to do it either. And so now is the time to set the stakes in the ground and not just say it, but to do it to make something happen. Not to say it, but to do it. For those folks out there to believe that now is your time, look right below the video and just put the number two. <laughs> I took that for you, man. I like that. I like that. See, I, I like that idea. And so it gives you a chance. And Joseph, he's focused right now. He'll get a chance to go back in and look at the comments right below and so forth. Right now, he's present. He's here with you. But you look right below that video. And if you believe that now is my time, now is your time, just put the number two. And that's the bat signal that everyone is out there watching right now. That, yeah, not only, not only is now my time, but now is the time. Now it is the is time. The time now when you first start off you 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 were talking about one of your methodologies but i know you can only get in so much detail we only got so much time man gee whiz but but you started kind of giving us a teaser on this whole idea of tell i think it's show try and do those are three words so for those folks that are writing right below the video and you're putting number two like now is the time and for all of you hit the share button and the watch party button we thank you without you there is no show so thank you for your time we appreciate that we know you can always make more money we know that but you can't make more time so you give us the most precious resource joseph i'm going to ask this to talk for a few minutes about this whole methodology that he has tell show try do can you take a moment to unpackage that and for those folks that are out there to hit number two you might want to write that right below the video tell show try do hashtag tag joseph mcclennan hashtag joseph mcclennan yeah um first off um write this down and, and by the way the reason i'm having you write remember what I, the saying is uh, that I, I made this up writing is inviting if you don't you won't but here's what here's what happens when you write something down, you actually cause your brain to create new neural associations. You make connections. If you just say it, st- studies show that if you just learn something and you get some knowledge, you're going to forget it within 48 hours. But if you actively engage and you physically do something and write it down, then you, c- you boost that up to within that 48 hours, you're going to remember it. It can be a week to two weeks after that. And then if you actually imp- uh, apply it, then guess what? You get to have that lesson for a lifetime. So the tell is just the knowledge. It's just the knowledge. Everybody here, and, and I did it already. I'm doing it with you. I gave you the first two things. I told you in the very beginning, you see, I've got a, I've got a teaching process, if you will, so that you don't just learn it. You know, and, and hey, that sounds great because knowledge is not power, no matter what they say. Knowledge is not power. Type of one, if you know somebody that is not as smart as you, that is not as talented as you, that is way more successful than you, type it. Go ahead, get out of your ego and type it. Okay? And it's generally not because they, they have more, they're born with a silver spoon in your mouth. I told you I was homeless at one point. It's because they do more than you. They physically do more, they physically feel differently, and they physically attract and touch everything else around them differently. So knowledge is not power. Write this down. Process is progress. Process is progress. You see, if I just tell you something, and I don't give you a process to do it, if I just say to you, listen, you gotta have courage. You gotta have determination, you gotta have clarity, you gotta have focus. All of that stuff is true, but what if you don't have it? How do you get it? 
And that's where the, so I've told you something, that's one thing. And then I show you an example, just like I did. The example was you looking at somebody in another car. Inside of you, in your nervous system right now, because I gave you that example and I had you write it down, your nervous system went like this, watch. Aha! As soon as you do that, there's a physical movement, you, your, your brain fires off something called dopamine, you know, not too technical about it, but your brain goes, let me lock that in further. So I showed you something. And then I give you something to try. And I'm gonna give you at the, at the, at the ladder of this call, but more specifically on, on the summit, I'm gonna give you some specific things to do. But then I give you something to, to try so that you try it out and you get a result. And then I'm gonna give you something to do to build that muscle so that the muscle becomes part of who you are, so that you show up every day and it's your default. It's your default to do more so that you have more. It's your default to default in that place of certainty, which is different than confidence, by the way. To default in that place of, you know what, I'm gonna do it no matter what and I'm excited about doing, I'm going for it. As excited as you are about anything else in your life, you should be, it can be, as excited about your ability to be wealthy. Oh, don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Don't get, I think you were already started, man. You know, um, I know we'll talk about that at the end, some ways they can stay in this conversation. We'll do that because we have something coming up, uh, the Comeback Champions Summit. But, but before we do that, Joseph, we, we have a belief here. It's one of our core values. And one of our core values is this concept called today is my January 1st. And for those mm -hmm. folks that know what we're about to do, all the regulars that watch, you can look right below the video right now and you can put today is my January 1st. And for those of you who are watching and want to know what in the L.O. Cool J and Shay talking about over there, no worries, no worries, I'll break it down for you. But today is my January 1st represents a do over. It represents a fresh start. It represents that your past doesn't equal your future. We don't wait for the calendar date to say January 1st. We create a January 1st moment now. And I believe there are several thousand January 1st moments every single day. And anytime you can make a decision, that's a January 1st moment. And that decision could forever change the trajectory of your life. That's a January 1st moment. Okay, for, for example, you make a decision right now that you're either going to work out because you got plenty of time or you're going to sit back and binge watch, right? That's a, that's a January 1st moment. You make a decision that you're going to have hamburgers and french fries, salt and pepper. Some of you got to have some ketchup. I know you got to have the hot sauce. Or, or, or you go to the refrigerator. You open up the refrigerator, and inside the refrigerator, there's some kale. Mmm, that sounds good, doesn't it? There's some Brussels sprouts. It gets a little bit better. Oh, um, as you know, there's that spinach. That's a January 1st moment. And so the January 1st moment is a fresh start. As my father would always say, Marsha Brown, who's no longer here, passed away May 2nd, 2017. He would say, Jay, your future is spotless. You get to create it. So Joseph, my question to you, now that they're writing today is my January 1st, and is they're doing this like Morris is doing it and Paula is doing it and Esther is doing it and Chrissy is doing it and so many of you hit the like button hit the watch button but my question to you Joseph is when you hear those words today is my January 1st what goes to your mind man what do you hear I, I hear a couple things first off I think that's brilliant absolutely brilliant for everybody to get that on your mind because where you look is where you go um I say and, and you know I, I believe that every day is our January 1st our January 1st to not just make a decision but make a commitment and a resolve, okay? Decision, we all make a decision and we do something in that moment, but that decision has got to carry through tomorrow, the next day, the next day, the next day, the next day. And that's called resolve, called commitments and resolves. And so to me, uh, my January 1st gets started every day that I wake up and whatever I do first thing in the morning, whatever I choose to do first thing in the morning, as it, I set the stakes in the ground and I go, you know, God, thank you for another one of these beautiful days and this is what we're gonna do today. I don't ask, what am I gonna do today? I say, this is what I'm gonna do today, which makes my brain look for those things to do. And then I go through certain processes that, that reinstill it in myself so that I have, watch this. Here's the difference. I don't have motivation. I have pull. And this is the difference. This is what you want. You don't wanna just be motivated because that takes too much energy and too much time to maintain every single day. You want something that pulls you towards your reasons why. 
Let me give, give you just really, really quick example. And you'll hear me say this again at another time. There's a house, and the house is surrounded by a moat full of water. And in that water are alligators, crocodiles, sharks, piranhas, snakes, tarantulas, lizards. It's horrible. Around the outside of that lake, or the, that moat, is a chain link fence. It's an electric fence with barbed wire on it. You touch it, you die. Inside the house, there's laying on one of the beds, there's a $10 bill. And I say to you, you and I are standing outside the fence, and I say to you, if you go in that house, you can have that $10. Type a one if you go in that house. If you'd you know, risk getting electrocuted to death, the snakes, the sharks, all that stuff, type a one if you would do it. Now, just because of time, I'm, not, I'm seeing nobody's typing a one, okay? Because it's only $10, but watch this. If the same situation, you and I are standing outside that fence, same house, but inside the house, asleep in the bed, is the person that you love the most in life. Your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your child, anybody, your wife, your husband, the person that you love the most in life is asleep in that bed and the house is on fire. And I say to you, if you don't get in that house, they will burn to death and die. Type a one if you get in the house now. Now, just because of time, I know you're typing a one because you do it. Get this and remember this for the rest of your life. It's because you have hull. You have a reason why to do it. You would fight me. You'd dig under the fence. You'd find a way. You may even die trying, but you would do whatever it takes because you're pulled towards it. The biggest difference that I get to help people find within themselves and instill inside themselves is that pull to erase the generational wounds that we've had, to erase the, the, the generational psychology that we've had that has held us back. And that doesn't matter the color of your skin, everybody has it, but in this case, obviously, I'm talking to you know people who know more than anybody else. The oldest story in the book is not the, the comeback story, the oldest story in the book is the hero story from slavery to freedom, and there's no other race on the, con on the planet that exemplifies it more than us. It is now is our time, now is your time. And again, this is for everybody, because you know, if you've got skin, period, this applies to everybody. But I especially want you to get it that this is your time. And so when I say, when I say pull, what's pulled, what pulls me towards it, I say every day I wake up and I have because I've generated it in myself. That I wake up with the pull. You don't have to tell me to get out of bed. You don't have to tell me to go do what I need to do. I had so much pull in doing this call today with you, Shay, and I thank you again. I thank everybody else. I couldn't sleep last night. Then I went to sleep and I, get, and I got up in the morning because that's the way my brain works. That's the way my psychology works, and I want that for you as well. When that happens, everything changes around you. Wow. Well, Joseph, you, you've heard this concept, and they may be curious. Um, you shared so many moments. What was a January 1st moment for you? A, a moment maybe for you where... Maybe one of the moments was when you decided you were going to do what you're doing now. You decided you were going to plant your flag. You were going to draw this line in the sand. And you said, you know what? I'm going to do the doggone thing. This is, quote, unquote, my jam. And for those folks that are out there right now that have hit the share button, we appreciate it. For those folks that are watching on Roku or Apple TV or, or Facebook Live or uh, YouTube Live, wherever you are, even if you listen to the podcast, you can't even see us. We appreciate you. Do me a favor. Hit the share button. Hit the watch party button. Uh, pay this message forward to another little girl, another little boy, or someone else out there right now that needs to make a change in their life. But the question I asked Joseph McClendon III is, or was, what was one of his January the first moments? I remember one right and clear. Is, uh, and I've had a lot of them, but this was <laughs> one that changed everything. This changed my financial trajectory. And that is the day I sat there and I'm thinking, I want to be rich. I want to be, I want to have money. I want to buy a nice car. I didn't have a car. And I'm, you know, I want to buy all this stuff. And I thought to myself, well, you don't have Jack. You know, you don't, you don't even have a place to live. How dare you? I made the decision right then and there. I made the decision to do something about it. I started looking for it. And when I made that decision, I set this, like I always say, I set the stakes in the ground. I said, nothing's going to stop me from finding something. And ironically, I went to the library and at the library, Shay, because I believe that we, we making that decision magnetizes us and things start to flow to us. We've all had coincidences and situations. I went to the library because it was warm. 
and I'm sitting in the library and I'm blowing, I'm glowing the stuff, and I see on television. Now this is this is many years ago. It was it was an infomercial, and it was a guy by the name of Robert Allen. And Robert Allen said, "Come to my seminar, and I'm going to teach you how to buy houses. You don't have to have any money, for no money down, and you can build a financial fortune." That was it. And I made the decision. This is what I'm going to do. But I also had the skills that I had learned before, which changed my psychology, changed my energy, and all that stuff. So, long story short, I saved up. I'm dating myself when I say this. I saved and collected soda pop bottles, Coke bottles, and cans, and uh, cut grasses, and I did everything that I could to save up enough money, $300 back in the day, to go to his seminar. I went to his seminar, very long story short, in less than a year and a half, I bought 26 houses. 26 houses, and I still benefit from that. That was my very first financial uh, win. 26 houses, but here's the deal, Shay. 500 other people were in that same seminar. Nobody else did it, nobody else. The only per the one person bought three houses. And the difference was, because I, that was my January 1st, I made that decision and I applied the process to it as well. Not just one of them, I got a bunch of them. Nah, I love it, man. You probably heard this before. Um, sometimes there's truth inside of truisms, but one of the truths out there is, um, Consistency is the key. Consistency is the key. Consistency is the key. And having said that, what do most people struggle with most? Well, they struggle with consistency. And there's some folks, they're excited right now, like they were back on December 31st, and they're writing down, now is the time, now is the time. And yeah. you ask them today what their New Year's resolutions is, and I, my hand is up sometimes as well. They can't remember them. My question to you, Joseph, is what do you share with your clients and what do you do in order to be consistent, or as my good friend George Frazier would say, hashtag stay the course. Yeah. First off, you got to understand consistency. Okay. Um, consistency. Consistency is a feeling. It's an emotion. Everything that we do is controlled by our emotions. But you've got to ask the question: What controls our emotions? And it's simple. It's our thoughts. It's top down. As we think, so we feel. As we feel, so we do. And so you have to learn the psychology and the skill of, uh, of getting yourself to feel consistent. Because it's not a, here's what happens. And, and there's, you can use technology as well. We all intend on doing it again tomorrow. You go to the gym and you go tomorrow, you know, you work out and you go tomorrow, I got to go to the gym, tomorrow, I got to go to the gym. Well, one of two things happens. We get distracted or even when we got to do it, we talk ourselves out of it and we procrastinate and hesitate. OK, you got to learn the skill of interrupting that pattern and replacing that pattern with something that gives you that pull. And when you have that, then you have the skill of being consistent, the skill of being consistent. Most people think of consistency means I just got to do it every day. I got to do it every day. Well, what if you don't have that skill? What if you have a history of procrastinating? What if you have, you know, you asked me this question before offline, Shay, and you said there's the housewife out there or the mother or the father, the single mother or father that's out there that's got children that has you know, a job, that has you know, you know, soccer practice, and now we're all homeschooling, and now we got all this stuff, and we're trying to start a business as well. You know, it, it, it's maddening, it's overwhelming. Well, guess what? Overwhelming is, is a psychology as well, and there's processes for getting out. As a matter of fact, can I give the, the, the skill of getting out of? Yes, uh, please, uh, please do, yes. So I want you to write these down, overwhelm, okay? Mm -hmm. And by the way, this, you know, I'm, I'm just brushing the surface of it now, I got so much that I can share with you. Um, overwhelm is, let's just get clear on what it is first, having too many emotionally charged tasks inside your head. Write it down. Too many emotionally charged tasks inside your head. I got to go to soccer practice and you're emotional about it. And the emotion is not a good emotion. It's not like you're going, I get to go to soccer practice and watch my kid and you know, 150 other kids waste time while I still gotta do this. You're not doing that. You don't have, you've got emotion about it and it's not great emotion. You gotta, you know, your business, you got all that stuff, okay? So the trick to it is number one, get it out of your head, okay? Because remember, it's top down. As you think, so you feel, so you feel, so you do, so you do, so you have. And so you gotta get it out of your head. Number one, write it down. What that means is list everything you have to do. List everything that's in your head. As soon as you do that, two things happen. Number one, psychologically and unconsciously, you get it off your mind and now it's on a piece of paper. It's somewhere else, okay? It's out of your mind. If it's out of your mind, then guess what? 
You don't have that same fear, that same feeling about it. It's sitting in front of your page. Your, your page. The other thing is it gives you the opportunity to do step number two, prioritize that list, which is the most important. Not which is the one I'm going to do next, just which is the most important. Because here's what happens. Remember when I said that why that pulls you? You get to look at it and you go, oh, this is why. I love my child, you know, and this is going to help my child. And in the moment, guess what happens to your overwhelm? It reduces. Okay? You feel better from something that you had stress about. Now you have cortisol. And so now you have dopamine release, which makes you feel good. The third thing is to take action on one of those things, the one that you can do now, the one that you can do now. If you can't, you know, you know, you got to take the kids to the soccer practice at five o'clock. Well, what can you do now? And then number four, here's the one that all. Yes, all of you achievers. First off, type a one if you consider yourself an achiever. Type a one. An achiever is just somebody who wants more than other, other people, okay? And you probably achieve more, okay? And this is the last thing, and this is the achiever's fatal flaw. Mm. And that is this. You're so damn hard on yourself. Even when you're successful at something, you go, I could have done it better. I should have done it better. You beat yourselves up like crazy. That's like scolding the baby because it didn't get the word right the very first time it spoke. Your nervous system wants praise. Your nervous system wants you to give it up to you. So when you've gone through that list and you start to do something, go, hey, I did it. Pat yourself on the back. You know, do whatever it takes. Sorry about this. That's cool. There's no worries. <laughs> Isn't that a big deal? Yeah. Pat yourself on the back. Do whatever, praise yourself, make yourself feel good. Go to, the, go to the mirror, look yourself in the eyes and say, I love you, you're amazing. As stupid as that sounds, guess what? It makes your brain start to do the number one thing that you need to believe. And that is that you got your back. That you love you. That you are the one that's calling the shots. That you is today's your day. When you've done those, if you're following what I said, guess what you feel? You're out of overwhelm. And then you get to put it into context. Listen. I'm busy as well. You know, I'm a single dad. You know, I got, I'm homeschooling my kid. I've got, you know, I've got literally 12 different businesses that I'm running. 12. But guess what? I'm not stressed about it. And here's the, I said there's four things. The fifth thing, the fifth benefit from doing that is you build the consistency of defaulting to, uh, to uh, the word I want to use is defaulting to joy, to joy, because when you've done those things, guess what happens is that, you know, you get to look at, at, at the reality and the reality is this. Thank God you got all those things to do. There's people out there that don't have any of that stuff to do and they, and their life, they look at your life and your life is a dream for them. And most of us are stressed over it. So it allows you to default to joy and to be thankful for what you have. You know, God put us all here to be thankful, to be grateful for what we have, not to bitch about what we don't have. That just puts more of it in there. And so that simple, simple tool, I'm telling you now, do this and and life starts to change for you. Man, you know, you know Joseph, it's one of those situations, man, we could be here all day, but we don't have all day. I mean, you get going, it's like, right, right, right. I'm typing as fast as I write as possible as I can and taking notes. Hopefully many of you are taking notes out there. You can see I got my computer here and I'm taking as many notes as possible. Um, Joseph, you know, quickly, why do you continue to do this, man? Um, I'm just curious. I mean, you're, you're pouring your heart out. Um, it's been a pleasure working with you. I'm looking forward to the exciting things we're doing together. But I'm curious of two questions. Um, one, why do you still do programs like this, man, when well, you don't have to? Um, you could be doing a lot of other things with your time. Yeah, um, because it's called legacy now. What that means is this, is that those of us that dare to dream while the rest of the world is having a nightmare, we're not only going to get the things that we want and, and build that abundance for ourselves, but the greatest part about it is, is that we are going to become the shining examples for others to model, for other people that that um, don't have that, even the drive that you have right now, that they get to look at you and they can go, wow, they did it and I can do it as well. 
And so that is my biggest driver right now. And it always has been since I told you before. Um, I was raised that way. My mom had us going door to door, collecting money for children's hospital and things like that. So it's in my blood. But the biggest reason why is because legacy. I'm leaving a son on this planet, and I'm and my goal is I'm I'm always going to do my promises that I made to the gentleman that helped me, to my parents, to all the things, to be that kind of person that other people get to go. He did it, and I can do it. That's number one. And then number two, to be that kind of person that encourages other people to step up and do it for other people as well. Right now, the world needs leaders, big time. And a leader doesn't just mean you know somebody that does what I do or you, Shay, gets in front of people and tells that. A leader is somebody that goes there first with compassion, with empathy, and brings others along with them. You're a leader in your own home. You're a leader in your own community. You're a leader as soon as you do something and you pay it forward, you give it to somebody else. Lastly, I'll say this, physician, heal thyself. And what that means is don't teach theory. At the risk of sounding arrogant, I've become very successful in a, a, a megapreneur in five areas. I told you one was real estate, next was music, next was being an author, uh, next was being, uh, was being a speaker, and then lastly was in business. I did uh, I, you know, a network marketing business. The company is, is irrelevant, but all of those things, I'm a megapreneur, and I'm saying that not to brag or to boast, but that's what I want for you as well. That because I have a multimillionaire megapreneur mindset, or excuse, excuse me, psychology, and that can't be taken away from you. Once you have the skill, once you have the tool, it is something that you carry with you for the rest of your life. And that's what, Shay, that's why I do what I do, and that's why you and I have, have partnered in doing these things together, and whatever I can do, that's my reasons why. And I and I now challenge everybody else to take that belief on as well, that you are the example for so many other people. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's powerful, man. Thanks. Thanks a lot. We're coming down the home stretch and folks will be asking. We'll talk about Comeback Champion Summit dot com. That's that's something we'll get to at another time, maybe. But uh, it is very important to so some of you that might not know. Joseph will be speaking at the Comeback Champion Summit dot com again. Comeback Champion Summit dot com. You can head over to that website. Comeback Champion Summit dot com and some very special things are going to go on there. Here's the good news. You don't need a credit card. You don't need uh, a checkbook. There's no swipe and succeed. It's open to the public because of Joseph and so many other folks that want to make this a difference. But you might be wondering, who does Joseph work with these days? So let me give him a, a minute or two to step back and say, you know, Joseph, five businesses. Joseph, you're, you're talking about becoming a multimillionaire and a megapreneur. Joseph, I'm hearing you talk about dare to be magnificent. Uh, Joseph, just for folks that are watching that might be curious, like, all right, what type of clients is Joseph even looking for these days um, since you work with stars already and, and so many folks? So take a moment to tell them kind of what you're up to, man, what you're, what you're looking to do. Well, I'm looking to do exactly what I'm doing right now. The people that I've had the privilege of working for, working with, uh, is uh, are, like you said, you know, some of them I can tell you their names, some of them I can't. You know, one of my uh, dear friends is uh, Forrest Whitaker and worked with him for a little while. Uh, Malcolm Jamal Warner. Um, and here's what you do. You can go to my website and you can see a whole lineage of people that are through there. But people, you know, Les Brown, as a matter of fact, Les uh, wrote the forward for my new book. Les is a dear friend and has been for many, many years. Uh, but the list goes on and on. Academy Award winners and, and Grammy winners and things like that. But here's what's important. Those people are human just like you. And guess what? They still, all of them have the same insecurities and the whole things that hold them back. My outcome with everybody is always to share people these three things. Number one, awareness. Awareness of what is stopping you specifically, not in general. You know, in general is one thing, but what's stopping you specifically? What holds you back in your life? Why you're not, I always say to people, if you're not you know, past that area, and I mean past that area of financial abundance, health, happiness and all those things, there's only one reason. It's here. It's because you're afraid. It's because you're not doing anything. You can blame everybody else. You can blame everything else around. But I'm living proof. Shay is living proof. And there's lots of living proof all the way around. And all you got to do is learn how to, how, to uh, how, how they did it, change those things. And most of us don't even know, Shay. Most don't, don't know what happened to us uh, to do that. But I, I will say this. You, wherever you are in your life right now, if you're listening to me right now, you're listening to us right now, keep 
doing this. Shay, you said you're going to talk about the summit a little bit later. Yeah, yeah, Honestly, I, I get a summit. We got, we're going to come down to home stretch. But do one question I asked everybody, and Eric sent me a note, Tabitha sent me a note, said, tell them uh, the, something about your dad, the story with your dad, the story, the lesson I guess you learned from your dad. And they say, ask him about his father, the story from his father. And I'm like, Okay, uh, so before we close out, I got—I don't even know what the story is, by the way. They keep—they keep sending me these notes, by the way. Um, so yeah. I'm gonna ask you. I guess there's a story about your dad, maybe a lesson or something about your father. Tell the story about his father. That's what they say. It, it is what my new book is about. And and by the way, Les called me up and said, Joseph, I need you to write another book. I've written this is my seventh book. I want to write another book. I got stuff to do. But because Les Brown asked me, if you don't know who Les Brown is, you got to check him out. He's an amazing, amazing yeah. man, motivational speaker for, you know, that he's he's the reason why I went down that path. I'm going to talk about that later. So uh, so my new book is about my father. My father passed away uh, in, in uh, 17, just like yours did. Uh, and my dad was a uh, was a true patriot, true patriot. My father enlisted in the army when he was 17 years old, lied about his age because he wanted to serve his country. And he uh, transitioned from there into the Air Force, 26 years in the service. Now, my father was extremely, now he grew up in the 20s and 30s, so it was very, very hard times, especially for a black man. So he would always tell us, you know, things like, you got to have your education and things like that. But he taught us five things, and here's what they are. And I'm not going to tell you the stories about them just because of time. Number one is you got to have integrity. Do what you say you're going to do. For yourself and for other people, integrity. And my father would demonstrate it everywhere. Number two is you got to have tenacity. That's what we call consistency now. And my father, I'll give you one quick story. My father would, he, you know, he believed that health was important. And he, he <laughs> my dad had us doing 50 push ups, 50 squats, 50 uh, sit ups, and 50 pull ups every single day. Not some days, not most of the days, every day. And he put a chart on the wall. Now, I don't recommend this, but I'm glad he did it. He put a chart on the wall. And if we didn't do it, if he'd come in late at night, because my dad would work two jobs, and if, if, if we hadn't done it, if we hadn't checked it off on there, and we couldn't lie about it because we had integrity, right? He would wake our asses up. Get out of bed. Do your exercises. And guess what? You only had to do that a couple times before you did it anyway. The third thing was that you have to have energy. Now, you probably noticed I got a lot of energy. I've had it my whole life. I've got a lot of electricity. And that comes from, not going to go into it, but, but you know that's what he taught us as well. The fourth thing was joy. Do this a lot. Joy. Gratefulness. All of those things. Joy. And the last thing is kindness. And that's where we come in right now. You, Shay, you, you asked me why I do what I do. It's because it's in my blood. And that's what I encourage everybody to do as well. You know, I have a poster around here that says, each one, reach one, and teach one. Mm -hmm. Giving is living. What you give is what you will receive. And there's so many people out there that need you right now. You said this before, if you're a speaker, if you're a presenter, if you've got a business of any kind, people need your products and they need you. They need the love that you're giving out. And so those are the things that my dad taught me. Uh, and I, you know, I give examples of how to do those things in the book. Uh, and I, but that's it, you know, that's, that's, yeah. uh, yeah. Well, you know, second to last question, because we're coming down the whole show. I know I said that. Joseph, tell us about energy. I don't think he understands. We're in like double overtime. OK, so yeah. Oh, my gosh. Joseph is still going. We're like in double. It's not even be triple overtime. OK, it might be triple. Overtime. Sorry. <laughs> but we're learning. And isn't this what it's all about? I mean, I believe that all superstars, their whole one common belief. You know what that belief is? They can always get better. That's the belief they have. So Joseph is certainly doing that with us right now. Joseph, you're going to be speaking at the Comeback Champion Summit. And the Comeback Champion Summit is an opportunity not only for us to inspire others to success, but more importantly, to provide them with the resources that are necessary to execute the vision for the people they were called to serve. What's one of the reasons why you, you cleared your schedule and said, I'm reserving this block of time just so I can make sure that I share my message with the platform. You could be doing a whole lot of things with that time. And this was just a conversation you and I were just having hanging out right now. And we thought we'd let them eavesdrop on it. This is kind of turned out pretty cool. Um, uh, you know, two reasons, Shane. I'll say these very quickly, I promise. And that is number one, the reasons that I said before is the pay it forward part of it. Yeah. And, and it is our time. It is our time. Everybody's time to get it right now. And then the second reason is because you're not going to get it anywhere else. Yeah. If 
you've been doing what you've been doing and haven't gotten the results that you want, it's because you don't have this last element, if you will. And so what my outcome in all of this stuff is to give you that last element, to give you the pieces of that last element so that you'll do something about it, so you change your psychology, which will change how you feel, which will change what you do, which will change what you get. If you want a change, you got to change. For, pe for things to change, you got to change. Most of us just don't know what to change. I've had the privilege of doing this for 30 years now. I've had the privilege of watching people and you know, people come to me and at the risk of sounding arrogant, pay me a whole lot of money to spend you know, an hour a month with them you know, for a year's time. Six figures and more to spend an hour of time with them. And it ain't because I'm so cute, Shay. <laughs> <laughs> He's so crazy. It's because of the processes uh, the, the processes that I teach you to do change you internally, which reflects in your external. Yeah, so I'm going to suggest you all head on over to www.comebackchampionsummit.com. Someone do me a favor that's out there watching right now. Look right below the video as we close out. Look right below the video and write those words, www.comebackchampionsummit.com. Come over and join us and pay that message forward. You'll be hearing more from Joseph. Joseph is so kind to share not only his vignettes, but the number one idea he learned from his mentor. He's been kind to share, you know, um, the secret to finishing strong so you can go into next year with momentum. And then recently he also shared the number one idea he learned to um, bounce back after a setback. And so he's been playing full out. And, you know, I know everyone else is busy, but he's done it. So what you hear him say he's doing, he actually does. And I'm blessed to be behind the scenes. Joseph, I want you to be able to close us out. I know you said you would give your final thoughts and comments. And I certainly appreciate that for those folks to empower and to inspire them. But as you do that, I want you to make a comment on one of the posts that you had on Instagram. Um, I now have this as part of my five minute journal and the five minute journal right below it asks you a question of a daily affirmation. I've had the same daily affirmation now for about three years. Right. So I was thought I'd, I thought I'd die with that affirmation, by the way, <laughs> which is say less, do more, execute the plan. That's that's my favorite. Like say less. Do more, execute the plan. But then I saw this one. This is just you randomly posting. I, I'll read it, and, and, and maybe for those folks out there, I'll post it. But he says, strive to be, strive to be the hardest worker in the room, the best attitude in the room, the most focused in the room, the happiest in the room, the most optimistic in the room. You might not always be that person, but if you make that your target, you will be even more amazing than you already are, man. As you close out with your final story or final thoughts to inspire and empower, I want you to know that you're amazing already. Um, you're incredible. It's been an honor and a privilege, a treat and a treasure to have you here on the Happy Entrepreneur Show, but more importantly, to have you connected on the ComebackChampionSummit.com. But over and beyond that, the behind the scenes and the conversations that we're able to have has helped me to grow immensely. And you don't know how much impact um, that's had for me in just a short time that we have to work together with so much more of a long journey to go, man. So I'm excited, super pumped and fired up and can't wait to get going. So with that being said, thanks a lot again. I'm going to turn over to you to have your final thoughts and comments, man. Okay. Uh, thank you. And first of all, thank you so much. And thank you everybody that's listening. Look me in the eyes. I'm going to tell you three things. Everybody look me in the eyes. Okay. And here's what it is. And I want you to write this down. You ain't seen nothing yet. However you spell that, however you do it, you ain't seen nothing yet. Out of me, out of Shay, and out of you. This is just the beginning right now. This, that concept, which I love, that this is your January 1st, is not just a romantic or motivational speaking uh, talking point. It is the truth. You ain't seen nothing yet. When you come to the challenge, it's not going to be just talk. I said it before. Tell, show, try, do. I'm going to give you a tool that you can use that you're going to get a result right then and there. So you ain't seen nothing yet. The second thing is this, in all seriousness. It's never too late to have a happy childhood. Write that down. It's never too late to have a happy childhood. And as crazy as that sounds, and counterintuitive as that sounds, what that means is this: you can't change what happened. History is what it is. But you can change how you feel about it, how you think about it. That's called your psychology. And when you change that, then you change how you go forward. And most of us don't even know that it's there. Acknowledgement is always the first step. I'm going to show you how, yes, you do, all of us, have a psychological wound that has been instilled in you. Forget how it came about, but it's been instilled in you. 
but you can change it. When you change that, you change everything. The third thing is this. I want you to write this down. Remember this. Life is exactly what you dare to make it. Write that down. Life is exactly what you dare to make it. Next, fortune favors the bold. I want you to remember that. Whatever you dare to do, and when you dare, it's not daring you know, some, because somebody else dared you to do it. Dare yourself. If you're sitting here and going, well, you know, this was great and everything, but I'm not going to click on that because this, that is you procrastinating. You know, that is you doing it. I'm just being straight up with you. And you spend enough time doing that. Please join us. It gives me the opportunity to pay myself for it and do what I'm on this planet. Shay and you as well. Life is exact, exactly what you dare to make. And fortune favors the bold. Boldly step up and dare to make your life magnificent. Shay, I appreciate you. You who are on this call, I appreciate you. I thank you. I have so much more to share with you. And it's not going to be just me. It's going to be Shay and, and several other people that are just monsters. I can't wait to learn from them as well. And I look forward to seeing you at the top. Well, thank you again so much, Joseph, for being on here. Thank every single one of you for watching. Here's how we're going to close out. Look right below the video. Look right below the video and write your number one takeaway. What was your number one takeaway? Because your big takeaway could be someone else's big breakthrough. So you look below the video. You look right below the video. And you write your number one takeaway. Because your big takeaway could be someone else's big breakthrough. And isn't that what it's all about? So don't hold it to yourself. We thank you for joining. If you haven't hit the share button, hit the share button. If you haven't hit the watch party button, hit the watch party button. If you haven't hit the like button, like. If you haven't followed us, follow us, and we will follow you back because this is your time. This is your moment. And today is your January 1st. You're going to get that business up and going. Today is your January 1st. You will become a megapreneur. And today is your January 1st because you will tell, you will show, you will try. But more importantly, we're going to do the doggone thing. So with that being said, for those folks who want to know who's doing all that yelling, my name, by the way, is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. And I promise you from the bottom of my heart, we'll make some good things out. We connect again next time. Remember this. Remember this. Time is long. Life, on the other hand, is very, very short. You got to live in the moment and you got to make it count. God bless and we wish you success. Peace. We out of here. Leave a comment below. Let us know your takeaway. Hit the like button and we'll see you on the other side. Joseph, thanks a lot, my brother. You rock. We'll see you all again soon. Bye bye. I made to my mom. I only did this message for one person, and that's my mom. This is for you, mom. Love you. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Shay Brown. My check, my check. All I do is we win, we win, we no matter what. Got money on my mind, I can never get enough. And every time I step up in the building, everybody hands go up. Yes. Yeah. And they stay there. Thank you, thank you, Captain.